Blaine Allman, of course, came into most of the shows and wanted a gig. So he put up his pup tent on my parking lot at the studio, and finally, I gave him his shot. When Dwayne showed up, he was probably one of the first guys with long hair and kind of the hippie look. But what really made him stand out was he was a wonderful guitar player. I had never heard a slide guitar played like Dwayne Alma could play. Dwayne had been in Los Angeles, had a, a group called the Hourglass with his brother Greg. They signed us on this big contract and uh, they wouldn't let us play anywhere. I think the first year we were there, we played like three concerts. So he finally said, hey, I've had it at this place, I'm, I'm leaving. And he wound up in Muscle Shoals, but uh, Right before he left, I talked him into going horseback riding with me because we weren't doing anything. Finally went out there and I said, listen, we go from the barn out to the field, we got to cross a paved road. I said, the horse is shod. It's what? It's got shoes on, you know? And if he slips, he'll bust both of his butts. So don't give him any reins. And guess what happened? And he hit right here. He couldn't play. And he wouldn't let me in his house for about six weeks. And I mean, that was, that was terrible. Cause I mean, you know, growing up without a father, he was somewhat of a father figure to me, even though he was only a year and 18 days older. So it came his birthday, November the 20th. And uh, I went out and bought the first Taj Mahal record and a bottle of Cora season pills. He had his cold and his arm in a sling. He was pissed off at the world. And I did what I could do. I put it down in front of his door, had it wrapped up and everything, and I knocked on the door and ran. I guess about two and a half hours later, my phone rings and it's him. He says, get over here, baby bro, quick. And baby bro, he called me that baby brother, uh, endearing <laughs> handle he had for me. He said, man, check this out. He'd been listening to Jesse Ed Davis play for Taj Mahal, and he was playing slide. He said, man, I dumped out all them pills, and I washed the label off the, the bottle. He said, check this out. He's got his hand still in the sling, and he's going, you know, and he's just already killing it, you know? <laughs> I've still got that bottle, by the way, <laughs> somehow. When Dwayne came here, he was on the Wilson Pickett session that we did. There was always a slight problem when we would go out, all of us white boys with a black artist, that we'd get looks, okay? But there was nothing as bad as going out with a long-haired hippie with us white boys. They couldn't stand that, right? And so both of them stayed back. So they went on lunch break, and my brother went up to Wilson, and he said, uh, man, why don't you cut uh, Hey Jude, you know, the Beatles song? At that point, I was mostly trying to create an original career of Wilson Pickett, right? My songs. Pickett and I in unison both said, look, are you crazy? We're going to cover the Beatles? And of course, Dwayne said, exactly. While we were gone, Dwayne changed their whole session. Just remember to let out your skin. When you get to the vamp, it goes into just an unbelievable groove. Dwayne Allman was playing such great guitar feels that something happened in that vamp. And all of a sudden, there was Southern Rock. 